In this video, we're reviewing the 2022 NFHS baseball rules changes, along with the rules of emphasis for this upcoming season. Hey everyone, Patrick Farber here with GHSA Baseball Umpire Development and Umpire Classroom, where we help umpires to develop their skills and knowledge. If you are new, you can always connect with us on social media, and as always, you'll be able to find links in the description below. Let's jump in. For the 2022 season, there is only one rules change that umpires need to be aware of, and it revolves around pitchers taking their signs from the catcher. This change is covered in Rule 6, which covers pitching, Section 1, Article 1. And this change is in addition to the rule specifically talking about when the pitcher is taking their sign from the catcher. It now says, The pitcher shall take or simulate taking his sign from the catcher with his pivot foot in contact with the pitcher's plate. Now, the reason for this rule change is that over the last several years, the game has been evolving with pitchers more commonly taking signs directly from the dugout. There was some confusion as to whether or not this was actually allowed under the original rule. So the wording was changed for two reasons. The first is that it allowed umpires to know that the pitcher taking signs from the dugout is in fact legal. The second reason for the rule change was to ensure that the pitcher still had to look into the catcher as if they were getting a sign. This way the offense had adequate time to know the pitcher was getting ready to deliver his pitch. Now, as umpires, we need to understand the intent and spirit of this rules change to enforce it properly on the field. The reason for this rules change is to eliminate the chances of a pitcher delivering a quick pitch, either to get an advantage over the batter not being ready for the pitch, or a pitcher using a quick pitch to prevent runners from being able to get their proper lead. Now, the penalty for this falls under delivering an illegal pitch under Rule 6-1-3. The penalty for an illegal pitch is that if there are no runners on base, one ball will be added to the count. If there is a runner on base, then we're going to call a balk and award the runners one base, but the count will stay the same. Now, to accompany this change, the NFHS added only one additional situation to the casebook. While off the pitching plate, the pitcher looks to the dugout and receives a signal for the next pitch. The pitcher next legally steps on the pitching plate, looks at the catcher, and then delivers a legal pitch. The opposing coach insists that a box should be called because the pitcher did not take his sign from the catcher. With this year's rule change, we know that this is not a box. The reason being, while the pitcher did take his sign from the coach in the dugout, he still simulated taking a sign from the catcher, and this constitutes a legal pitch. So ultimately, with this rules change, they made it legal for a sign to come into the pitcher directly from the dugout. We just need to have the pitcher simulating taking a sign from the catcher so that the offense has time to prepare for the next pitch. Now that we've reviewed the 2022 rules changes, let's move on and examine the five points of emphasis for this season. Now, two of this year's points of emphasis are very similar. They are excessive celebration and Sportsmanship. The NFHS Baseball Rules Committee wants us to focus on the educational benefits of team sports. They also want us to emphasize that disrespectful behavior severely erodes the basic premise of educational based athletics. With the excessive celebration, the Rules Committee really wants to see choreographed celebrations removed from the game and to prohibit theatrics that involve props or specific roles assigned to players as part of the celebration. Now, this point of emphasis is specifically directed towards coaches, but the Rules Committee notes that if coaches aren't able to handle this, the umpires will. The point of emphasis to the umpire directly states that we can step in if a coach is not handling excessive celebrations. They point out that we already have the ability to do that in the rule book under Rule 3-3, which covers conduct. They point out and emphasize to the coaches that penalties for this can include warnings, restrictions to the dugout, or even ejection. The sportsmanship point of emphasis this year is specifically aimed at chants and loud noises, artificial or natural. They want us to remove intentional distractions by one team towards the other that are meant to distract the opponent either before pitching, hitting, or fielding. This could include something as basic as a player trying to yell Bach to distract a pitcher. Again, with this rule, we should be looking for the coach to be on top of their team and on top of their players' conduct before we even have to get involved as umpires. But 
Their failure to do so means that it falls on the umpires. And again, we can use rule 3-3 to enforce conduct penalties. Again, this could include a warning, a restriction to the dugout, or even an ejection. Now, one thing to know is that players cannot be restricted to the dugout for sportsmanship issues. So with players, they can receive a warning or be ejected. The next point of emphasis is proper use of equipment. Equipment is designed by manufacturers and sold to consumers for a specific purpose. The NFHS and state associations want to remove the risk of injury to players from improper use of equipment. While this obviously includes actions like altering a bat, a big point of emphasis here in Georgia is wristbands being worn around the belt. You see this often with play calling for teams, but because the band is designed to go on the wrist and not on the belt, this is not legal for playing action. This is an improper use of equipment and needs to be addressed immediately. The umpire should ask the player to remove the equipment from around their belt and place it properly on their wrist or failure to do so could result in ejection of the player. The next point of emphasis is sitting on buckets. Now, specifically, this is talking about coaches sitting out of their dugout on the playing surface during live action. We do a pretty good job of this here in Georgia, not having to worry about this with coaches. They mostly know that they are not allowed to be outside of their dugout during playing action. Now to quickly review, all coaches, players, subs, anyone not supposed to be on the field must be in the dugout during live ball action. And obviously this includes sitting in live ball territory on a bucket or a stool. Finally, the last point of emphasis is lodged ball procedures. With this, they want to emphasize that if the ball remains on the field but has become wedged, stuck, lost, or unreachable, it is a lodged ball. Now, in this point of emphasis, they point out that there are already rules in place for balls that become lodged either in a player's uniform, a catcher's equipment, or even on the umpire, as well as rules explaining that a ball stuck in a player's glove is still live. This isn't something we see too often in our games, but it's something that we need to be aware of and know how to enforce when needed. You can find this under Rule 5, which covers dead balls and suspension of play. In this section, you can also find a table with proper awards and penalties for certain situations. So there you have it, our 2022 points of emphasis for NFHS baseball umpires. If you found this video helpful, be sure to check out the rest of our videos and you can sign up for our weekly rules quiz starting in February and specifically to help NFHS umpires improve their skills and knowledge. Thanks again for watching. And as always, I look forward to seeing you on the field.